mutable references. These are, uh, I think these are really interesting. They are, um, you know, an immutable reference is, uh, it just gives you the view into uh, data, but a mutable reference lets you change the data. And um, as you can imagine, there, uh, there are more restrictions on this. Um, but first I'll show you uh, how the, uh, the syntax looks. So, you know, a regular reference looks like that, just an ampersand, whereas a uh, immutable reference, you have the uh, ampersand mute. Now, um, so let's say you have a, uh, a variable called number, you know, a, uh, a reference to it would look like that. And uh, a mutable reference would look like that. And you have this space here because you don't want to, uh, you know, turn it into a single word. Uh, it would be impossible to read. So uh, I will show you uh, a very simple example. Right now we have, uh, so you start out with, uh, you know, my number equals eight and then uh, we give it a, uh, a mutable reference and we call that uh, numref and the first thing to note is that uh, here as well we need uh, we need to write mute and that's because um, you know a mutable reference doesn't make something mutable it has to be mutable in the first place so uh, it says right here uh, cannot borrow my number as mutable as it is not declared as mutable so it has to be you know, mutable, changeable in the first place, and only then you can use a, uh, a mutable reference on it. And then the, um, you know, a reference, uh, you remember that the opposite of an ampersand is a, uh, is a star. So if you want to uh, change the value now, we have this uh, numref, and uh, what you do is you go star numref, and then we add 10 to it. And then we can uh, print out uh, my number. And it'll show you that, uh, that there you go. Th we have, so through numref, we have changed the value of my number itself. And the, uh, it's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like uh, lending, lending out your computer to somebody. Uh, you, uh, you give them access to the, uh, to the computer and then they can make changes. And uh, whereas, you know, immutable means uh, you can have as many people as you want because, uh, you know, if, uh, if nobody's able to change uh, the value, then it doesn't matter how many there are. And so, uh, so the rules with, uh, with these references are like this. Uh, you can have uh, as many immutable references as you want. Um, you can have one mutable reference and also you cannot have immutable and mutable together. So you can only have a, once you have one mutable reference, that's it. There's no, there's no more. You can't add anything to it. And uh, the, uh, the example I like to give is, uh, say you have a, a PowerPoint presentation and you are giving like a, uh, you work in a lab and you're giving a, a presentation on the history of frogs. And so you, you sit, you know, sit down and you, you write your PowerPoint and then uh, your your manager knows a lot more than you about frogs, and so you say, "Hey, can you uh, can you look at my uh, presentation and make any changes?" And so you give him your computer, and he has a mutable reference to it now. So he takes that computer and he makes all the changes that need to be done, and then it comes back to you, and that's no problem. And then uh, you know, situation two, this is uh, immutable references. This is also no problem. It's uh, it's where you go and you give the presentation. So you have 100 people coming to, uh, to look at your presentation and nobody has access to your data. You're the only one with, uh, with your computer. So it doesn't matter if it's 100, 1,000, 10,000 people. That's totally fine. And they can all see because they have an immutable reference. And then the problem situation that Rust doesn't let you do is where you say you're giving your presentation and at the same time, your manager has your login information, so he can log in remotely. And so the you know the people coming to see the presentation, they think they're going to get data on frogs. They want to learn about frogs, but then uh, all of a sudden the manager <coughs> logs in, and he starts writing an email to his mother. And now these people are getting all the wrong data. And uh, you know maybe it's uh, you know for people it's kind of funny, but uh, for for a program that's relying on uh, 
on data to be exactly right, this is uh, you know this will this will be a big problem. And uh, here's uh, here's what it looks like when uh, when you do that. So here we have a uh, a mutable number uh, starts with uh, we give it the value ten, and then we have an immutable reference. So number ref is expecting to have this unchanged data, but then along comes number change, and this is a mutable reference to it. And then we use number change to try to change the value, and then we print or we want to print that out, and Rust will say you're not allowed to do that. Uh, you cannot borrow number as immutable because it is also borrowed as immutable, and it's uh, it's really uh, it's really good with showing you where the problem is, even all the line numbers. So it says, hey, on line three, you made an immutable borrow. Then on line four, you have an immutable you have a mutable borrow here, and then uh, and here you are you're using an immutable borrow uh, on line six. So here's our, here's uh, where your problems are. And, uh, but then on the other hand, sometimes it looks like, uh, like there's going to be a problem, but there's not. And that's because the, uh, the compiler is generally pretty smart and I'll show you how this works. So we have a, uh, mutable number 10, and then we have a mutable reference and then, uh, we called it number change again. Then we change the value. And then we make this number ref, and it is an immutable reference. And maybe you'll think, oh, you know, this is not okay because we have mutable and immutable at the same time. But it's actually okay. You can see it prints out 20. And that's just because the compiler is smart enough to see that number change, we declared it here, uh, we used it here. So at this point in time, there's only one mutable reference. We used it, and then we're done. And then along comes the the immutable reference, and um, you can see that this is this is all we need. We don't need to use this anymore. So it's actually just uh, one mutable, and then it's done. And then there's one immutable, and that's also okay. So the compiler will try to uh, will try to be your friend, and uh, you know it won't. Uh, it doesn't give you problems just because you know that's the rules. It uh, it it works with your code as much as possible. And the last, uh, the last cool thing about um, references in this chapter is that uh, it shows us uh, how shadowing works. And you remember shadowing is where you, uh, you know, you declare a variable. It's, here it's called country and it's a string. And then later on we declare the same variable name, but it's, uh, it kind of takes over, it blocks the, uh, the variable. So when you access this, uh, this country variable now it's not uh, it's not a string it's uh, it's just an i32 and uh, you know you might think uh, you know does this kill does this kill this other variable and it doesn't it actually blocks it and you can use references to see so here this uh, this country ref is accessing it has a uh, you know a reference to country but it's a reference to country with this data and uh, country ref is still around. And so on line five, when you print it out, you can see it prints out Austria instead of uh, printing out the number eight for here. And that's because uh, you know it's, uh, it's a reference to this data and it doesn't matter that it's called country because, um, because the data still exists. And you can, uh, in this case, uh, we, we can use a reference to show that it's still accessing this original data for country. And then, uh, but then on line five, when we, when we uh, print country, it's actually accessing this, uh, this variable that has shadowed the other one.